So, what do these have to do with motorcycle engines? Let's get into it. Very nice, aren't they? Revelator L. Hi, welcome to Revelator L. So, this video is all about uh, using something for multiple uses in a roundabout kind of way. So, uh, yeah, I've just shown you some uh, table covers uh, which I recently bought for my garden furniture. Marvellous. Uh, actually, when I was putting it over the table, I thought, actually, these would be perfect for the bike uh, or bikes. Uh, same sort of size. You've got lots of tyres underneath. Great. So I thought, ah, multiple uses. And it kind of got me thinking about... Um, this uh, project build which I've been featuring on the channel and I know that I have to split the engine. One of the problems I've been having is getting data for uh, the engine, you know, uh, workshop manuals, that kind of thing. So what's this got to do with covers? Uh, so stick with me, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find out. Right, so what I found out about this engine is that it features in multiple motorcycles. And this is more prevalent in small displacement engines or small manufacturers. They'll use sort of generic engines. So this engine originally featured in the Honda CG125. Um, then the Chinese uh, got hold of it and they started producing their own. And that's basically what's in this uh, bike or in this model. This manufacturer of this model also used the same engine in another model. So this is the Marathon, the AC, the air-cooled Marathon. They also feature it in the Tango from 20, 2009 to 2010, something like that. Now, this is not to be confused uh, with the uh, Marathon Pro, which uses a WR engine from Yamaha, and that's a liquid-cooled engine. So that's what I was getting confused right at the start. Not between an air-cooled and a liquid-cooled engine, but I thought it was uh, they were using a Yamaha engine. But oh no, uh, they're using a, a Chinese clone, as it were, of a Honda engine. Right, okay, so that's the multiple uses link uh, covered. But it doesn't help me. I know I've got to split this engine. I know I've got to get into the gearbox. I've literally just come back from a ride and whilst it's it's a runner as it were you know it uh, works uh, the engine does sound a bit ropey and um and uh, the gearbox is definitely a little bit shaky now whilst i said in a previous video that i found metal fragments and i know it's all come from the gearbox and at the end of the the uh, oil lubrication trail as it were and before it goes through an oil strainer on this is not an oil filter it's an oil strainer back into the oil system so i know it's not getting back into the engine i still wonder about this gearbox the integrity of the gearbox and how long it would last and yeah i was getting up to 50 miles an hour and it's starting to make a bit of a racket and yeah i wasn't too um uh, too happy with it so I think I may actually bring this engine rebuild, uh, or certainly this gearbox rebuild, forward. Uh, it was going to be in the winter, but I've got a feeling I may be forced into bringing it forward. Right, so I've got manuals from various different sources of the disassembly part. Well, do I really need a disassembly manual? But that's by the by. What I can't find is the reassembly part, which gives me all the facts and figures, all the torque values that I'll need, which is really, really odd. So uh, I've been on to multiple sources again, trying to get something. I've managed to download different generation uh, manuals of this engine uh, as it were uh, of uh, from uh, elsewhere so i found uh chinese manuals uh, for it as well uh so they're on their way uh, but i haven't got the definitive manual for this engine so before i start breaking it down because in truth I probably would have already started into this engine by now. What's holding me back is the, the lack of a proper manual to go by. And um, so basically, what I think, the worst case scenario, what I'm going to have is multiple manuals of different variations of this engine from different manufacturers, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Honda, so on and so forth. And I'm just going to have to look at the part, then look at the manual and say, does that marry up with that and use that torque value there and then? It's not the way I'd want to do it. It's not the way I I, I would really go about this in, in a normal conventional way, but I'm kind of being forced into it. Now, as I say, I'm, I'm confident that 
all the torque values that I have to cover the engine will be fine of what I expect to find. However, it's what I don't expect to find. If it's different from the other drawings that I have, that's where I may come unstuck a little bit. So that's why I'm tr still trying to gather as much information as possible. Right, so how does this relate to you? So if you watch my uh, channel, most of my videos for the last sort of couple of years has all been about Harley Davidson. Well, Harley Davidson's, let's say, uh, for example, they will use a particular engine and it may, go through different slight variations, let's say, from year on year, uh, or, or the whole bike has different variations from year on year, but essentially it's the same engine for that particular model or model series. Let's say the Softails with the M8 engine. You've got the Taurus with their M8 engine, which is slightly different, and you've got all the other engines that you can think of as well. But essentially, they're not really interchangeable, that you know that a Harley engine is going to go into that bike, unless we're talking about custom bike builds, of course. And of course, if we're talking about the Sportster engine that went into the original Buells, you know, that's a side issue. But essentially, you've got one engine going into that bike. Now, you could talk about uh, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda, Triumph. Uh, Triumph is a classic example where they're using one engine in multiple different models. So that kind of works. Um, I suppose you could say the same thing about uh, the the M8 engine with the Harley Davidson. They're using one engine in multiple different models. Whereas what I'm talking about here is that they're using one engine for various different manufacturers. And each manufacturer may do something slightly different. They may use a diff slightly different piston. They may use a different carburetor. They may use a different, I don't know, ignition system, so on and so forth. So the, the fundamental mechanics might be the same, but there might be slight differences. And when you can't access the actual information about your bike, then you're kind of left in a no man's land situation. So if I have to share anything with you, it would be this. First of all, if you're not sure what you've got, if you're not sure what you're dealing with, you may have an engine that may have been put into your motorcycle that actually doesn't belong to it. Uh, and that happens all the time, especially with smaller, uh, smaller bikes, smaller displacement uh, bikes, you know trail bikes, motocrosses, whatever, uh, even road bikes, okay? That happens all the time. So, so this is what you will need to do. Don't go off the motorcycle VIN number if you can, okay? Go off the engine number, okay? And that, was, that will tell you what that engine is in particular, then search that. Now, it obviously, it may coincide with the VIN number, and it may coincide with the manufacturer, of course it is, and if that's, if that's what happens, that's absolutely great. But if it doesn't, then you're going to have to do a bit of research on the engine alone and not the uh, the motorcycle. And that's pretty much where I'm at now. I'm researching the engine itself and nothing else. Now, yes, it's all generic. It's all the same. But again, when I'm talking about specific torque values or a specific procedure for this generation engine, I really would like the literature in, in front of me. So look, that, that's where I'm at really. It's um, The bike's running smooth, it's okay, there's no problem. If I start it up, it, it sounds sweet, but it's when I get to 40, 50 miles an hour, then you start to think it's it's not far from exploding as it were. But um, look, it's, it's not that bad, I'm painting quite a grim picture. But if you're having problems with identifying parts for your engine or you know maybe you're not even sure what engine you've got and you can't find manuals for it you can't find literature for it get the engine number first of all that will tell you what engine you've got i'm not talking about the peripheries i'm not talking about carburetors or throttle bodies or whatever it is you've got uh, ignition systems whatever injectors i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about the engine itself go off the engine number itself and not off the motorcycle VIN number uh, and, um, and and see how it goes. Now I'm confident that this engine belongs to this motorcycle with this VIN number. The problem is that the manufacturer and all the dealerships and all the online dealers, because you kind of buy these from online dealers really, um, 
they're not really uh, giving that information out. You know, it's very hard. Most of them saying we don't have this uh, information, which I find hard to believe. Uh, um, a couple have sent them through, but would you believe that the files were corrupted? So I'm waiting for them to send it back again, if they will. Um, the manufacturer did not want to release this information to me whatsoever. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell's going on there? So you know it apart from me setting myself up as a, a riehu service center i have no idea what else to do what else i can go by so you know when, when you when you think about uh bikes being an easy fix sometimes they are and sometimes they're not uh but anyway look it's it's all a learning uh, it's all a learning curve uh for, for everybody I, and i will say and and i think this is what i find most interesting about working on bikes throughout you know uh all my years with bikes uh is that you always come up with against problems and issues and the fun is trying to work it out it's frustrating as hell don't get me wrong but you know when once you finally figured it out or you finally find a source for it the information that is then you'll then you'll be uh, fine now for those of you watching this and you maybe you are rie who uh riders right and you think oh you know well where is all this information well if you go to the website i've got a dedicated page there is a link on the right hand side and i'm putting everything that i find onto that web page. I haven't updated it in a few days, but everything that will pertain to this bike and this build is going onto that web page with all the links, all the videos and everything like that. So go check that out. And all the information will be there as well. So, <sighs> yes, the uh, the engine uh, strip down and rebuild may happen sooner than, uh, than I thought, than I'd said, uh, than I anticipated. Uh, but um, as I say, uh, I won't do anything really until I've uh, got all the, the proper manuals. And hopefully, the fingers crossed, in the next couple of days, that'll all, that'll all come together. This happens quite a bit when you're dealing with an engine. And say, if you're a Harley rider in particular, you'll know that, well, this can happen actually in all manufacturers. It's got nothing to do with just Harley Davidson. You know, you'll know that from one year to the next, there can be quite big differences, not in engine per se, but maybe in specific components on the bike. And it's, you know, it's the same here, but when they're sharing engines or they're having generic engines put into there, and then you've got certain, certain variants which may use a Japanese engine and others are using a Chinese engine, it can get very confusing very, very quickly. So if I've misspoke in previous videos according to what engine uh, I've had or what I thought I had, there we go. That's, uh, <laughs> that's basically the reason. Anyway, so... Uh, I'll let you know is you know what I do with this. Uh, but as I say, right now uh, I'm just bling it up a little bit. I've got the hand guards that come on, and the hand grips. Uh, I've got a um, I've got a heat shield uh, for the uh, the exhaust that's gone on, and uh, everything else is great. So I'm not really doing much more with it now. I'm just going to hold fire. I'm just amassing some tools um, uh, ready for the uh, strip down. Uh, that would be particular to this bike as well. And, uh, well, there we go. So uh, lots more videos come in. Some uh, Harley-Davidson-specific ones and general motorcycle ones as well. And then possibly uh, in, in a while I'll return uh, with this uh, more more videos on this Riahu Marathon 125 AC, air cooled super motor, which eventually may turn into an enduro bike. Eventually. Who knows? Ta-da! Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, like and share, check out the website, revelator.com. Ta-da!